We want to ask you uh, about housing on the UMass Amherst campus. There was not enough during last year's school year. That's, of course, a big deal for parents. It's a big part of the college experience. What's happening? Why wasn't there enough? Uh, well, uh challenge. We were in the, uh, under construction of new housing there. We have uh, regulations we have to go through to get it, but we do have all kinds of new housing that's opening up now. So we think we're in pretty good shape in terms of making sure that everyone has housing if they want it. A lot of students at UMass Amherst, after their sophomore year, mm -hmm. they get to be juniors, they, they want to mm -hmm. find out, see if they can find some housing out and about. That's true at almost any university, but we're in good shape now in terms of having enough housing because we just built uh, a, a huge new uh, several units of housing. So you don't see, foresee any students having to stay in hotels, that sort of no, thing? No, I think okay. we're in good shape for this Let, year. Let's, let's, let's talk about UMass salaries. They're some of the highest in the state, from the medical school to coaches to the university president, and, and I'm not judging it, I'm just yep. saying what it is. Meanwhile, tuition keeps going up too. So how do you square that for, for students and taxpayers? When you look at the list of the highest paid people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Let's start, let's start with the medical school. And it's true, the medical school, uh, they're the largest, but uh, the state pays about 4% of the overall medical school budget. The medical school has become one of the best medical schools in the country in terms of research, in terms of faculty, and they have to pay people to be competitive. The same thing is true with, look, I've, in my time as president, I've had to hire uh, six new chancellors, and, and there's a lot of turnover in the business. In order to attract the best people you can get, uh, sometimes you have to make sure you pay within what's called the 75th percentile mm -hmm. of what university presidents in that area make or what a faculty member makes. Mm -hmm. So we want to be competitive. My goal is not to have UMass be a mediocre place that can't attract the best people that we can get, that isn't nationally ranked, uh, that, that, it, that isn't a 600 and $90 million research entity. We, we want to be the best entity we can get, and sometimes we have to pay people to do that. Now, we want to be careful when we do, but I would say on, on the cost of living increase, uh, we've increased below the rate of inflation. In fact, during COVID, we went two years where we didn't e increase uh, the, uh, the uh, tuition. So, and as I said earlier, we've put more money, $395 million into financial aid. That's something we constantly have to be monitoring, but I don't think the answer is that UMass should become a mediocre institution and not have research and not have the best how faculty you, in the world. How, how, do you, how do you balance that, that the basketball coach is one of the highest paid people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? And I can't, you know, since Marcus Camby, when was the last time they had a Final Four team? So athletics, in order to, to have an... Uh, the question is, uh, should a university have athletics? I think athletics is the front porch of any university. I think it's important. Last year, we had the 50th anniversary of Title IX. We have uh, women athletes all across the UMass system who, who are, are excelling. Uh, there's a, there's a we, our program up in Lowell, we have a women's um, field hockey program. Our coach there, Shannon LeBlanc, she's got her GPA of her women athletes is like through the roof. So I think athletics is important as a university. And again, the issue is, are you going to be able to compete? Mm -hmm. the, the UMass Amherst uh, hockey team won the national championship. Right. So should we lose that hockey coach to BC or BU or some other place because we're UMass, we can't compete? We think we want to compete in, well, in one of, so, so that's part of the deal. Let me yeah. ask you about our former governor, Charlie Baker, who yep. uh, is NCAA president. You think he's going to be able to make things better with some of these NIL deals and all that? There are, listen, that's a tough job. Uh, and, and right now. <laughs> but so I is mean, governor. Yeah, yep, it, governor is a tough job. I think he's the right person for the yep. job. But there are all kinds of issues, the portals where students can transfer after just one year and go to any place yeah, else. But that's, they, but that's okay because coaches can do the same thing. So yeah, coach, I, I, I don't. Have, but the name, the likeness, and all of that, it's, it's, I, it's I know, challenging. It's a challenging I, I, know we're, I know we're squeezed for time, but, but, but do you believe that college athletes should be paid? They should have their name, image, and likeness paid? Uh, I, I think that they should get, yeah, I think that they should get what's tied. I don't think the university or the program should keep all of that money. But you have to find a way to implement mm -hmm. it. I think Charlie Baker is the right person to try to find the new one. But this is nuanced. And you know, I don't want to see only, only 20 major football programs in America. No one else can compete with any of them. We have two uh, hockey programs, Division One, that are, that are very brilliant. competitive hockey They're programs. Right. And, and they do really well. It doesn't cost as much money, right. obviously, for hockey. The other thing I would say about athletics is we 
have two Division Three programs at Boston and Dartmouth. Division Three athletics are also great. Not everyone wants to play Division One or wants to take the time to, and and it costs us a lot less. But we attract incredibly diverse students because of our Division Three athletics. I think on the whole, athletics are worth having at a, at a college or university. Right. Mr. President, thank you for your time. It's Thanks great very to much. see you. Our appreciation to Marty Meehan for coming in.